What's going on, world? DS1 Ross. And I'm back. Shout out to everybody. Appreciate all y'all for supporting me. DS1 and Sheep States TV. Much love to everybody, man. Um, good morning, everybody. Just came to talk to y'all this morning. As y'all can hear, I'm definitely under the weather. These allergies, man. It's the worst. If you got allergies, you know. So, um, I appreciate all y'all, like I said, for tuning in. Um, if you're coming in right now, do me a favor. Please hit the like button. Very much appreciate it. Hit that like button, please. And, uh, this morning, y'all see the title? Black Gangsterism is Taboo. And the reason why I came up with this topic is because I notice that when we speak about revolution, uh, when we speak about change, the change of our people, We always tend to, and, 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 and I guess this is just a, a, a thing that I see on YouTube, but for the most part, I hear a lot of black people, you know, basically speaking down on the black gangsters of our time. Well, you know, nowadays there's no more real black gangsters. You know, black gangsterism is like um, a thing of the past. Good morning, Amanda. I appreciate you tuning in. And what's going on, Love Wisdom? Good morning. And I just noticed, you know, it's a thing on YouTube to basically diminish what black gangsters have done for our people. Or they like to say that these black gangsters or black gangsterism has ruined the black community. Now, if y'all know me, I always say there is no black community because there isn't. If there is a black community, show me where it's at. So that's number one. Black gangsterism didn't ruin the black community because there is no black community. Number two. We have to understand where gangsterism came from. Who created the concept of the gangster? Who was the originator of gangster behavior? Gangster mentality. It's not the African American man. We learned that from our oppressors because gangsterism is being a slave master. See, that's being a gangster. Being a gangster is. You sell somebody the drug to get them sick, which is the food, then sell them the medicine to keep them sick, and then sell them the goddamn cure to get them better. All the same goddamn people selling you the same thing. That's gangster. See, that's real gangsterism. The medical industry. The FDA. See, these are gangsters. These are the real gangsters. The ones that sell you the food to get you sick. And then you go into their hospital institutions and use their doctors and use their medicine. And then they turn around and say, well, you're okay. 
and give you some medicine to go home with that's later on down the line going to affect you and make you sicker? And do you have to go back to them to get some more medicine to kill you from the shit you just got from the other medicine they gave you? That's gangster. See, we got to understand where gangsterism come from. Black people didn't create gangster shit. We, we don't know what gangster shit is until we came to America. Till we stepped foot here and came encounter with these people. That's when we understood what being a savage is. That's when we understood what being a gangster is. This is adopted behavior. This is behaviors and mentalities we had to adopt to survive. Because if we in the jungle, guess who eats? The, one, the ones who are strong enough to kill. You see? So when we talk about black gangsterism, and why it's taboo in society is because when we adopted that mentality, we became equal to the real gangsters. See? This is why they don't never want us to celebrate our gangsters. They want us to always look at it being a negative thing. But they celebrate their gangsters all the time. They celebrate Al Capone. They celebrate Lucky Luciano. They even named streets, bridges after these people. You see? But you got black people that'll tell you not to celebrate your gangsters and how we don't need to celebrate gangsterism. See, a lot of these people on here, man, they don't understand that. They be trying to sound smart, but they're using the talking points of the people who they claim they're against. But if you're telling me to not celebrate gangsterism in a country that was built off gangsterism, you're using the same talking points of the slave master. And of course, he don't want you to embrace black gangsterism because guess what? He knows that that's what keep this society running. Gangster shit. He knows that this country was built off of gangster shit. And people not being afraid to do gangster shit. See, this is why they make sure black men are always fighting with each other. We're always in a state of competition with each other, which is going to lead to fighting. Because you got the house dude or the homebody guy who was raised one way. And then you got the outside kid who was raised another way. And they grow up and they view the world differently. And it's because one child is outside and the other one is watching life go past him. He's watching it. He's not a part of it. And you got a lot of these dudes on YouTube that like to talk about street shit that they've never done, never been a part of. They're just speaking from an aspect of being a watcher. You watched gangster shit go on. 
You was not there. You was not a part of it. You don't understand why gangsters exist. See, the black man and the black woman who decided to turn to gangsterism, they did it because they did it out of necessity. They did it because they needed a way to eat. Because of our living conditions. Just like all of the other people who came from different parts of the world who, who became gangsters. People forget the Italians wasn't already here. They came here and started the mafia. The Sicilians came here and started the mafia. The Jews came here and started the mafia. Watch the mafia movies. Watch mobsters. These were poor immigrants. From New York City. Who created the mob. Oh, but when black people unite out of poverty. And disdain. And stress. Oh, we don't need to be gangsters. But it's okay for Maya Lansky to be a gangster. It's okay for us to worship Maya. It's okay for us to worship Lucky Luciano. It's okay to worship Dutch Schultz and to watch all these gangster movies. When at that time, there was black gangsters too who took and fed their communities. Watch the movie Hell Up in Harlem. Bumpy Johnson. Why we want to shy away from our gangsters? Huh? Why we want to not talk about the people who fed us? But everybody in the rap game, we the mob. We the mob. We always, we always want to mirror some shit. Oh, but when I make Larry Hoover a black historian... I got people in my comments telling me, oh, how you going to make a killer historian? Oh, so J. Edgar Hoover, not one of y'all historians, huh? Huh? Huh, little white boy? So y'all don't look up to J. Edgar Hoover. Y'all don't look up to people like Timothy Vey. Hmm? Clive Davis. Huh? Y'all look up to these people, right? Leo Cohen. These are gangsters, man. You think they not? Oh. Y'all can look up to them, but we can't look up to ours. Huh? See, a lot of y'all don't know, too. The reason why there's new um, restrictions on YouTube is because Leo Cohen is running YouTube right now. Yes, Leo Cohen. Mm -hmm. He runs YouTube with the owners. Oh, but black gangsterism is taboo. It's taboo. But all we doing is trying to survive. We trying to eat. We trying to eat. And we can't honor the men and women who did that so we can't eat. Let's go to California, the Bay Area. Shout out to Thiz Nation, Mac Dre, the Romper Room Boys. You know how they got money to feed their people? They rob banks. 
They did the same shit the Black Panthers was doing. They were robbing banks, the romper room gang. Jay Diggs in them. Yeah. Real life bank robbers. They come back and feed their hood. Oh, but they want you to look up the Ma Barker. They want you to look up the uh, Bugsy Siegel. These not our people. They want you to look up to them. The Frank Castellanos. They want you to want to be them. See, they don't want you looking up to the Larry Hoovers and the Big Meaches and the Bumpy Johnsons and the Freddie Myers. When it comes to black gangsterism, you know who they talk about? All the rats. They talk about Frank Lucas. They talk about Nicky Barnes. They talk about the rats because they're trying to downplay and put in the minds of, of us that we shouldn't celebrate black gangsterism. That should be taboo. But their whole communities was built off of gangster shit. When you go to these mob center cities like New York, like New Jersey, they got whole sections just for them. We can't live there. Because their mob business built their neighborhoods. The Varanzano Bridge in New York City, that's a mobster. Go to watch the movie The Mobsters. Varanzano was in there. He was a Don. He was a mafia Don. Don Varanzano. Don Mazaria. These people got whole parts of cities, man. Who you think run the uh, sanitation industry in New York City? The mafia. The mob. The Italian mob. Oh, but when Larry Hoover was trying to aggregate the black vote in Chicago and, and his son years later tried to run for office, he got denied. But in New York City, you got an Italian mob dude who's the goddamn chief of police, Ray Kelly. Monster. Who you think runs the um the, the the Jersey PD? The mafia. The mob. Why you think in most most of your known cities there's always a little Italy? Why is there always a little Italy? I'm going to tell you why there's always a little Italy. Because these people salute their gangsterism. That's why. See, they don't want their people to forget where they came from and how they got what they got. Oh, but we can't do that. Black folk, we, you can't do that. You know? Um, Big Meech is a bad guy. You know, Tukey Williams was a bad guy. He was evil. He deserved to die. This is the type of stuff that they say about ours. About black gangsterism. You see, pay attention to what's going on. Pay attention. See, what they're really 
are trying to suppress is black alpha manhood. That's what they're really trying to suppress. They're trying to suppress the warrior mentality, that warrior spirit that's within black men, that they don't ever want to come alive again. This is why they make sure guys like BM, guys like Big Meech and BMF are in jail for centuries. This is why they make sure guys like Larry Hoover never come out of jail. Guys like Jeff Fort. Guys like Matulu Shakur. They don't want these guys in the streets. And if they do, they know that the youth today are programmed enough to kill them. Look what just happened to one of the black disciple um, gang leaders. I'm not going to say gang, I'll call it an organization. A top known black disciple was killed in his own neighborhood. That's because them kids don't know what they doing. When dude went to jail, them kids probably wasn't even born. You see? So you expecting them to respect some shit they don't know nothing about. But we, all we want to do is blame our kids. No, you got to blame the system. These kids are, are being born into a system. You can't blame them. They don't know what they doing. They don't know. Shout out to everybody in the chat too. But why is black gangsterism taboo? Why? Because they're, they're trying to suppress that warrior spirit in black men. You see? They're trying their best to keep us suppressed. That's why they got all these goddamn narcotics running around in the streets in pill form. Everybody popping perks. Everybody popping Xanax. See, y'all got to understand that this shit is by design. This shit is not nothing that's just happening. It's by design. When I was young, you couldn't find narcotics like that in the street. You couldn't find pharmaceutical drugs in the street. Niggas on the corner selling Percocets. That didn't exist growing up. Dudes ain't selling crack no more. Niggas selling perks and Zans and hydrocodones and oxycodones. And dudes is making millions off this shit in the hood. Because you got 15 and 16 year old boys hooked on narcotics. They're hooked on pharmaceuticals. Shout out to Mega Montana. I appreciate you on that donation, bro. And I'm going to keep doing it. I appreciate you. Growing up, we didn't have that. It was the crack dealer on the corner. It was the heroin dealer. Now, it's still cracking heroin dealers, but they selling it in pill form. See, they're doing everything to suppress that within us. They keep us drugged up. That's why they don't want us to talk about black gangsters.
when all the black gangsters did was the same shit the white gangsters did. Take care of their people. Feed their people. Same shit. But we can't honor our gangsterism. We gotta look down on it. We gotta find something wrong with it. But then turn around and go watch a mafia movie. Turn around and go watch um Ocean's Eleven. That's mob shit. Who you think started the casinos? The mafia. The first casino that was ever built was created by Bugsy Siegel. A Jewish gangster who was down with the Italian mafia. Go back and watch the movie Mobsters. It was only two Jews in the crew. You had Maya and you had Bugsy. Two Jews. Everybody else was Italian. You want to know how the Jews got in the mafia? That's how. They've been in the mafia since the beginning. Because they all grew up together in Man on the Manhattan streets as poor immigrants. Watch the movie The Mobsters. Lucky Luciano, Frank Costello, Bugsy Siegel, and Maya Lansky. They grew up together on the streets of Manhattan, New York. And they grew up poor. And they created the mafia. They create what we know today as the commission. Who everybody thought was ran by Al Capone. Al Capone didn't run the commission. Lucky Luciano did. But see, Lucky never wanted to be the face of nothing. I appreciate you, sis. Thanks for the donation. Appreciate that, Kels. You see? So a lot of us really don't even, we really don't even know what we be talking about. When it comes to gangsterism in America, this shit was built off that. Was built off of extortion, robbery, rape, murder, drug dealing. This is what American society is built on. America birthed gangsterism. Let me say that again to all you house niggas. Gangsterism was built by America. So the black gangster is nothing but a product of the American gangster. Okay, house nigga? So stop thinking black men who took on gangster shit ruined the black community. Because it didn't. You know what ruined the black community? Poverty. Disenfranchisement. That's what ruined the black community. The black community that you think exists because there is no black community. You can't have a community without cooperation. So there's no black community because there's no black cooperation. Niggas ain't cooperating with niggas and women ain't cooperating with men. There is no black community. Get that shit out your head. There is no black community. Because the things that encompass a community, we don't have that between black folk. But you know what fed communities that was poor gangster shit? I know if you grew up in poverty, 
You remember that drug dealer who bought everybody ice cream on the block, who bought the whole block ice cream. All the kids get an ice cream cone. I know you remember that. I know you remember the, the drug dealer who had the big cookouts, fed everybody, and had the crackheads sweep up and clean up everything from the cookout. If you grew up in poverty, you know about the drug dealers who lined the young boys up and gave them all dollars. Bought certain little kids sneakers for school. Put smiles on mama's faces. They gave back to their community. Oh, but when you get a... Uh, a Coney Island, a community that's out in New, in New York City, in Brooklyn, that's ran by the Russian mafia. Nobody has nothing to say about that. Nobody talk about how their gangsterism is affecting their community. But you're so quick to judge niggas. You're so quick to judge your own people. So quick to condemn your own people. But how you think these people, these other people, how you think you got a Chinatown in every goddamn city? Huh? How you think the Chinese in the Korean, you think they ain't done no gangster shit? Look up the, man, y'all better do some research. Y'all better do some research. Oh, y'all think the Arabs ain't do no gangster shit? Who you think bringing in a lot of the drugs in these neighborhoods, in these black neighborhoods now? Aki in the corner store. Oh, y'all oh, didn't know that? Y'all didn't know that, huh? Oh, y'all didn't know that. Y'all didn't know that these Arabs be selling drugs out they stores? Y'all didn't know that? See, black people got to wake up, man, and stop holding each other to these bullshit standards. Okay? See, people, people, black people got to wake up. We need to wake up and understand what we're actually dealing with. Who and what we're actually dealing with. Understand the mindset of your adversary. Your adversary is winning because he has you mentally screwed up. He got you worshiping him for gangster shit and knocking you for you doing it. But you worship him for creating it. Now, how did he get niggas to think like that? How did he get us to think like that? See? And this is why I understand when I hear certain brothers say, they're not moral. Morality. Morality. 
is going to keep you lost in this world. It's going to keep you sleep and it's going to keep you a sheep. Because we don't live in a moral society. The people who run this shit got blood, dirt, guts, um, gunpowder and some more shit on their hands. Do y'all actually think the people who run society are moral? How could you be moral and put pharmaceutical drugs in the streets and make them accessible to young children? How are these people moral? Huh? Hmm? These people are not moral. And you got black people trying to make moral arguments. This is why they laugh at us. We're trying to have a moral conversation with an immoral person. Immoral people. What is wrong with y'all? And you know what keeps you caught up in morality? That a lot of y'all quote unquote conscious people like to use. Oh, I'm not religious. Oh, I don't believe in religion. Yes, you do because you're moral. You're caught up in morality. And religion teaches you to have morality. It tells you what to decide what's right and what's wrong. But how the hell you gonna tell a person who don't have the means, the legal means to go out and eat and feed themselves. How are you going to tell them that they're wrong from stealing from the store? So I'm not supposed to steal from the store, even though I don't got no nine, eight in two days. I'm not supposed to steal from the store. I got to go and pray to God and hope somebody give me something to eat. Because I'm a moral person. See, that's what that shit teach you. You ain't eating three days, but pray and have faith. Because you need to be a moral person. And God will send you somebody to send you some food. Nigga, you might be dead before God sent a person to give you something to eat. You might be dead. So all you quote unquote woke niggas that's talking about morality, you're not woke. You're religious. If you're religious, you're still asleep. You're not as woke as you think you are. Because you believe in morality. If morality was such an important thing, <laughs> then guess what? Black people would have died a long time ago. Because when you do things to survive, you put you put morality to the side. And that's why we got to learn to live with regrets. Because there's certain things we're going to do in our life to survive. And we may not be proud of that shit. But we got to learn to live with regrets. Because that's life. So.
Sometimes you got to do some immoral shit to get by. Sometimes you got to do some immoral shit to make sure you okay and your kids are okay or oh, your mama is okay. But they want to make black gangsterism taboo. So when the brothers stepped up and fed their communities off of drugs, it was something wrong with that. But how do you think Little Italy is built? How do you think Chinatown was built? How do you think these places were built? You think they just went and got loans from banks? No. Crime. Gangster shit. Gangster shit. They did some gangster shit. Oh, but um, we can't salute BMF, the black mafia family. But let's salute Al Capone. You know, let's salute Sammy the Ball and John Gotti and the Italian mafia. But you got a black mafia. And when somebody get up here and talk about them, Oh, y'all, y'all celebrating gangsterism. Hold up, nigga. When, when, when you go every goddamn day and go buy your food, you celebrating gangsterism, nigga. Don't you know that? Everything you see around you was built on some gangster shit. This shit wasn't built on morality. Man, and y'all better wake up, man. Y'all better wake up, man. <laughs> Do y'all understand what crime is considered? Crime is business, man. Crime, without crime, you don't have the penal system. You don't have the penitentiaries without crime. Y'all got to y'all got to wake up. Crime is business. Big business. See, y'all need to watch these war movies. Y'all need to y'all need to really pay attention to these movies, man. See, I forgot the name of this movie, but um, Jack Nicholson was in it and he was selling guns. You know what he was doing? He worked for the American government and he went all through Africa and sold countries who was warring with each other the same weapons. And the guy who was with Jack Nicholson, he ended up getting killed because of his morality. He thought it was wrong for what they were doing. And them Africans gunned his ass down. I forgot the name of that movie. If, if y'all know the name of the movie, put it in the chat for me, please. And this is what Jack Nicholson was trying to explain to homeboy. This is American business. Take morality out of it. This is business, homie. We work for the government. We're allowed to do this shit. We're sanctioned to do this shit. His partner felt like they was doing something so wrong because his partner was moral. He had morals. So every time he went and, and they sold another country guns, knowing that they're going to use those guns and kill their own women and children, he couldn't, he couldn't accept that. 
because he watched those Africans running and hold their own people hostage with those guns. That shit, get, that shit was getting to him because of his morality. God of War, exactly. Now the name of that title just told you who's the God of War. America! America's the God of War. They the ones who started this gangster shit. They created gangsterism. They did. But I can't celebrate the black men who was gangsters in my neighborhood. Who fed the neighborhood. We, we can't do that as black folk. Because we got to have money. We, we, we can't celebrate those guys. You know? We, we, we can't celebrate our gangs. We can't celebrate Guy Fisher. One of the most intelligent black men of his time. Guy Fisher. Go look him up. That's one of the guys Nicky Barnes told on. One of his best friends. Guy Fisher. He owned the Apollo. Black man. A black man owned the Apollo. A gangster. Guy Fisher. Highly intelligent. Highly. Man still sitting in prison. Straight up soldier. Still in prison. We, we, but we can't celebrate those guys. We can't celebrate the Philly Black Mafia. We can't celebrate those guys. We can't celebrate Sam Christian. Bo Baines. These are the brothers who help create what you see today in Philadelphia. With all of the black businesses. Black businesses was created through gangster shit. It was funded by gangster shit. Oh, but it's okay for, um, you know, um, Lucky and them to do it. You know, they got into sanitation. They got into the police department. They got into politics off gangster shit. Oh, but black men can't do that. We must go the legal route. Who taught you niggas that? This is why I call y'all house niggas. Because who taught y'all to think like that but the slave master? I'll never step on your toes, boss. I'm going to go to college. And I'm not knocking people who go to college. I went. I'm not doing that. I'm speaking to a mindset. Where we don't want to do nothing to piss master off. See, I listen to how people respond to certain things. Right. Right, love, wisdom. The Chambers brothers. Right. Walter Weeks. Right. These is real gangsters, man. Who took care of their people. Stand up dudes too. They want us to glorify the rats. See. They don't glorify the rats. They don't glorify Sammy the Bull. 
but they want us to glorify Frank Lucas and Nikki Barnes because they were government informants. They want us to worship the Alpos. They want us to worship all the rats of our, of our community, of our cut, of our ilk. They want us to worship the rats. See, they don't want us to worship the real guys, the stand up guys. See? See, I didn't do that this year on the Black History Month series, but I usually go out my way to make sure I do that. I always try to make sure that I implement a black gangster. I always try to. I'm going to definitely do it next year on the Black History Month series for 2020. I might just do a whole black gangster list. All 10 of the historians going to be all black gangsters. All of them. You going to make you going you going to make our gangsterism taboo. But you're going to make all these Italians and, and these goddamn Jews the, st the standard of gangsterism. And you know why they made them the standard? Because America is what created that. So they want us to worship and look up to them. They don't want us to look up to our folks. Because they never want us to see black men as strength, as powerful. This is why they made sure they destroyed all the black organizations. All of them are destroyed. All of them. The, the BDs, the GDs, the Vice Lords, the Bloods, the Crips. All of it is destroyed. And the, and, and the little bit of organizations that are left, them people, them dudes gonna rat on each other. See, y'all, y'all not paying attention. How you think they attacking? How do you think they attacking and, and, and getting these indictments on, on these um organizations? Do hip hop. Y'all don't even know that they're using hip hop to get these people indicted. That whole Takashi 6ix9ine shit was not about Takashi 6ix9ine. It was about the blood organization he was connected to. They've been on the Fed list. They been was supposed to stop them guys and send them guys up the river for hundred years. This is what I mean by we got a bunch of house niggas talking about some shit they don't know about. All of the blood and crip gangs in New York City are under indictments. They all have been indicted. All of them. The ones that are left, they are getting them through music. Takashi 6 9 was part of the non Trey Bloods. Which was started in Brooklyn, New York. That is one of the blood sets that have not been indicted. The rest of them guys are in the mountains for a hundred years. All the OG Bloods and Crips are in jail forever in New York, from New York. They're in jail. And they're doing it from state to state.
Y'all not paying attention. Y'all are not paying attention. They didn't want Takashi. They wanted Shoddy in them. See? And that is because when you look at these organizations, one organization controls a whole section of a neighborhood, which gives the organization what? Power. It gives them not only street power as far as money and all of those things, but it also gives them local political power. See, we don't understand that everything starts in the street. The streets is the lowest level of business. The streets, politics start in the street. This is why Larry Hoover gathered up all the GDs and their families from all the neighborhoods and sections and brought buses to the neighborhood. See, he understood the game. This is why they don't want us to worship black gangsterism. This is why they want us to talk down about our black gangsters. Because the black gangsters knew shit. They knew how the system worked. This is why he changed it from gangster disciples to growth and development. See? Just like the mafia went from being the mafia to the NYPD to the LAPD to the NJPD you niggas better wake up thanks for the donation Monique Hill I appreciate you I just saw it I appreciate that Monique Hill you niggas better wake up How did Tukey Williams win a Nobel Peace Prize? Hmm? If he was such this evil person. Huh? Hmm? <laughs> Y'all niggas better wake up, man. Y'all better wake up. Y'all better wake up. See, I'm gonna have to do. I'm gonna have to do a whole dissertation on what what they deem gangs, but are organizations. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to do a couple streams and break down what was the real purpose of these organizations and show y'all. So y'all could get to, so y'all could understand black gangsterism. So y'all could stop worshiping Italian gangsters and Jewish gangsters. Understand who you are. The cops hate us. Of course they do. Shout out to Captain Levi. Thanks for the donation, my brother. Understand who we are. Because see, and I'm going to say this and then I'm going to go ahead and close out. See, one thing them people understand is they know if we're ever on the same playing field as them, 
they'll lose. They understand that. They understand that. If this shit was really equal, like people like to say it is, we would have been one. And if you notice, whenever them organizations wanted to go political, they were shut down and indictments were sent down. People were murdered and everybody else was drugged up. And that's how they destroyed black gangsterism. So I appreciate y'all tuning in this morning. Um, please, if y'all haven't yet, go and check out the Black History Month series of 2019. Go and check that out, please. Um, it's very much appreciated. Y'all go check that out. Ten Black Historians. Um... Also, check out the Relationship Series if y'all haven't yet. And um, y'all stay tuned for later on tonight. I will be doing the update on, on the trip that um, I'm trying to do for uh, me and, uh, and the family. So um, if y'all interested in a, um, in a build and chill trip that I've come up with, if y'all interested and y'all want to just listen for some details, y'all stay tuned. Um, I will be live again tonight. At 8 o'clock, and I will be breaking that stuff down. I will be giving out some more information about the trip. So y'all stay tuned for that later on. Um, I appreciate y'all for tuning in. Thanks to everybody. Um, I don't have that much time to uh, scroll up. So shout out to everybody. I appreciate all the donations. Shout out to all my donators. Everybody who donated, I appreciate y'all. I appreciate everybody who tuned in. If you haven't yet, please smash that like button. Much love and respect to all y'all. And I'll catch y'all on the next one. I'll catch y'all tonight. This is DS1 Ross representing Sheep Stay Sleep TV. And remember, y'all, we got to heal before we bail. We got to heal before we bail. I'll catch y'all on the next one. Y'all have a good day. Peace.